Welcome back to What Are T Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the BT-5. It's a tier three Soviet light tank. It's located on the south board of Steps. And this one is under the command of 73 North of the WTWW clan. Game on. Well, this video is about two Soviet tanks that were mass produced and were actually used in quite a few wars. You're looking at the Booster the Tanky 5, which is the BT-5. And um, Booster the Tanky means fast tank in Russians. This one is armed with a 45mm main gun, which is capable of doing 47 Alpha, 67mm pen with standard AP. And with the premium rounds, it's got 102mm of pen. The standard reload is 2.21 seconds per shot. And you can see that is exactly what uh, 73 North has for this vehicle. Now it's based on the Christie suspension system as you can see and of course Christie did sell a number of tanks to the Russians, to the Soviets rather, and they were actually sold as uh, agricultural vehicles but then the Soviets developed them and made them even more lethal. Okay he's up against the BT-7 which is the next version up of the BT-5 and of course had a 76mm howitzer as its main armament. The only problem is it's not very good at adjusting at targets that move quickly and that's how he was actually able to avoid most of those shells by ducking and diving. That's one of, one of these tanks is very good, they're very manoeuvrable, very high speed, good rate of fire but very very poor armour. As you can see he did take a couple of hits and uh, well one from a ram and the other one from uh, a Chiha in there as well. Okay, Chiha's just around the corner, but he's got mates with him now. And so he's going in to try and destroy the Chiha. See, so he's getting hits. He's using his speed to defeat the Chiha, of course, by maneuvering. Now he's got way past him, but the Chiha's interested in the S35, and he goes down to the S35. Okay, next target's a T29. Now the T-28, which is um, the forerunner of the T-29, was actually the next step up from the BT-5 and 7. So it's kind of like kicking your ancestor in the, or your, not your ancestor, your descendant in the T. You notice how quick this tank is. He's able to take that guy out. Now he's up against the Toldi, which of course is a Hungarian tank. Because it's only a small calibre gun, it does take quite a few shells to take them down. But notice how quickly it's firing. Almost as fast as a uh, two pounder gun. And in fact, that's around about right because this carrying a, uh, as I said, a uh, 45 millimeter calibre and the two pounder is a 40 millimeter calibre. So he's now got three kills and he's going up against the rest of the enemy. It's a short-term number battle, as you can see we started the battle with only 10 tanks each and a couple of those were bots and the enemy team, well, they've lost quite a few. We're three up on the enemy at the moment, so we've only got five enemy to kill to win the game. Okay, one is AFK, it's the MTNS 1G14 which the Chieftain said was a pretty awful tank, but it's the one with the auto cannon, And he is uh, active, because he just fired us and hit us with both rounds. I always call it the Batman tank, because of course with those machine guns on its roof, it does look like Batman's ears. And he's got the kill on the empty LS, but we lost a lot of hit points. And now he's got to deal with the, uh, the Panzer uh, 39. Or um, is that um, Noin and Dreisig? He's punching rounds in, but the guy's actually getting shots back at us. Love the way he's circling him, getting the damage. This thing does maneuver very well, thanks to that Christie suspension. The whole point about the Christie suspension is it actually made the whole suspension system much more simple and enable the tank to go very very quickly narrowly dodge one of our teammates there the m3 stewart now they made 1884 of these 
and they started making them, designing them in the 1930s. They actually saw action in the Spanish Civil War, the Polish campaign, when the Soviets actually invaded Poland from one side and the Germans invaded from the other side in 1939, the one that kicked off World War II. I mean, the Soviets called that the Polish campaign because they were on the other side. They made a deal with the Germans to actually um, um, capture Polish territory, but they weren't allied at that point. It was only later on that during the World War II that they were actually on the opposite side, of course. Well, somebody at the other end of the map is capping and they've only got two enemies left. He's got five kills now, so it's potential he could get a top gun. It's probably the 127, the T127, which another, which is a premium tank, but of course it's another derivation of a tank that uh, they were actually looking at, the Soviets were looking at. I think he's going to try and pop up behind that bush. We know that the Chiha is the other one, so it must be the 127 here. Hello. Okay, he's in the bush. Now he's shooting. He should be spotted. And yes, we have been spotted. He gets a couple of rounds in. This thing has eight degrees of gun depression. And he's got the kill. So that's the top gun. And that's just the Chiha that... And he's already taken down one Chiha. So he's just got to get this guy now. And we've won the game. Now, actually, the... Um, the descendants of this tank actually ended up being the T-34 because, of course, it was um, they were trying to design the next light tank. Oh, he gets him with one shot. And there's his top gun. It says top gun, but he actually earned it on the 127. But that's the end of the first battle. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first ace tanker for 73 North of WTWW in the BT-5. Yes, I think this is one of those tanks that uh, 73 North ignored the first time around, or rather when he re-rolled, if it, this is a re-roll account, because I think he is actually, but um, he's actually missed this out, but now he's gone back and he's actually got himself a first ace tanker very, very quickly indeed. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle, sharpshooter for getting more 10 or more consecutive shots on the enemy. He also picked up a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine. He also got a Hand of Gold for surviving the battle, having received damage from at least four different enemy tanks or more. And on top of that, he picked up the High Calibre for dealing the most damage in the game and the Top Gun for getting at least six kills. In fact, he nearly ended up with eight kills, but of course he wouldn't have got a Radley Waters simply because they don't award that below Tier 5, and this is a Tier 3 tank in a Tier 3 battle. So the BT-5, yes, um, it's actually quite fast, manoeuvrable, Got good firepower from that gun and decent penetration. The big drawback is the fact that it actually has virtually no armor. That's one of the reasons why it's so quick. It has only 20 millimeters at the front on the turret, and that's the strongest armor on the vehicle. The rest is either 15 millimeters or even 10 millimeters of armor, which is why it's so easy to penetrate. So really, the best way to stay alive in a BT-5 is to keep moving quickly. Let's have a look at team score. Wow, 1,983 hit points of damage in the game and, of course, the two medals. The second highest was the 127 that we took out uh, towards the end. 1,254, that was a real player. And the third highest damage went to the Chi Ha, um, 1,173. Now, it's not the one over on the west side of the map. That's the Chi Ha that uh, we killed right at the end, who didn't see us coming because we came up behind him very quickly and planted around in his rear to finish him off. When it came to kills, he's got that one too. Seven kills there for 73 North, three kills for the Chiha, and two kills for the 127. And when it came to base XP, he's the only one to get over 1,000 base in this game, 1,094. Uh, the next highest being the Panzer S35 on his own team, and on the enemy team, their T127 and the Chiha. Was it? No, actually, no. The... Um, it's the two Panzer S-35s in second and third place. Sorry, I'm wrong. And third place, a uh, fourth place goes to the T-127. That's right. He fired 59 rounds of ammunition in that game. You do have a big ammo capacity, 145. So there's no chance he was going to run out. You can see he got 48 direct hits and 46 penetrations, mostly down to the fact that he was firing premium ammo. 
1,983 hit points of damage, of which 100 were more than 300 meters. Nine hits received from the enemy. Seven of those were penetrations to non-penetrations. Again, shows the bad armor, and some of those shots actually hit the tracks rather than actually going in. And four enemy vehicles spotted, nine enemy vehicles damaged, seven killed, 245 hit points of damage assistance, and he got 64 defense points when he reset that T127. Maybe he could have left that just a little later to reset. Would have picked up a defender medal as well. Uh, he could have done that, actually. He could have um, um, waited just a few seconds longer because he was the only one who was actually at the cap to do the reset. But I think he's just too eager to get rid of that guy. On a premium count, he actually made 47,527 credits profit, including a 65 credit, uh, 65,000 credit bonus. But you can see his ammo costs were huge. 25 bonds for a mission achievement and 1,641 experience points out of the game as well. So yes, as I said, the BT-5 was kind of intermediate between the BT-2, which was the first fast tank that the Soviets produced. Then they went to the BT-5 and they mass produced that. And it was used and they gave it to the Spanish for the Spanish Civil War. And then they used it initially in Poland and then obviously in the winter campaign against the Finns. And there are some BT-5s still in Finland, of course, that were captured by the Finns. They were very good at capturing Soviet vehicles and driving them away. And uh, then obviously they also used them during the Second World War. The problem with this tank, as I said, is that it doesn't really have any armor. It does have speed, but it doesn't have armor. And th when the, um, uh, the Germans invaded, a lot of the drivers of BT-5s knew that they were going to get taken out by the Panzer III and the Panzer IV because, of course, those tanks were much, much better. Even the minor tanks that the Soviets, were, the Germans were sending up against the BT-5s were going to be able to kill them very, very easily indeed. So a lot of the um, tank drivers uh, decided that the only way they could actually um, um, survive the war was actually to crash their tank, ram it into the enemy, and effectively they destroy their own tank, um, but the crew would get out and the enemy tank would be destroyed as well so they could walk away and then they'd be given a brand new T-34. Uh, and of course that would prolong their life. If they stayed with the BT-5, then obviously they would be sent back into battle in a BT-5, which of course would mean they'd probably die in the process. So the tactic became um, to stop the Germans by ramming your tank into them and and stopping them that way, which did work. It did wreck the vehicle, but of course then they had to jump out of the vehicle and run away from the Germans as fast as they could, go back to headquarters and say, can you give me a new tank, please? Which seems to be the very tactic that the Ukrainians are adopting, at the not the Ukrainians, the Russians are adopting in the Ukraine war at the moment. They are, are getting hit, their tanks are being destroyed uh, or being damaged. They go over a mine or something like that, uh, the tanks are immobilized. There's nothing they can do to fix it in the field before the drones arrive. And therefore, they abandon the tank and go back to the Russian depot and say, I need a new tank. And that seems to be working because, of course, uh, uh, the Russians will give them a new tank um, because, of course, they uh, they need people who know how to drive tanks. So they can't afford to uh, give a tank to an amateur, uh, somebody who was previously uh, a machine worker in a factory or um, a farmer or, or a layabout, they can't give a tank to someone like that because you have to train them. Whereas if you're already trained in how to operate a tank, then they can easily give that to somebody who already knows how to operate it. So a lot of tank drivers, once they wreck their tank in uh, Ukraine, uh, they're going back to Russia and say, give me a new one. And then they go out again and wreck that tank as well, which is why the Russians are losing so many tanks. They're losing them simply because their tank crews want to stay alive. And they know full well that if they do get hit by a drone with an anti-tank weapon, they're probably going to die straight off. So uh, they would rather abandon the tank as an immobile tank um, that's already been damaged and uh, is incapable of fighting anymore and stay alive a little while longer. Anyway, enough of me waffling on about that. Let's have a look at the second tank, which, of course, is the Valentine II. And here's the Valentine II. It's the Tier 4 Soviet premium light tank. It's located on the north spawn of Ensk and still under the control of 73 North of WTWW. 
Now it's armed with a 45mm main gun capable of 47 alpha and with standard ammo it's 51mm pen and with the APCR it goes through 84mm so it's got a very powerful gun very similar to the gun in the BT-5. Now about the only weak spot on this tank is of course the engine cover at the rear as you can see. See but um, that corrugated area but so long as you keep your front to the enemy and this is an infantry tank so it's designed to accompany the troops into battle it's actually very good because the troops will keep the enemy from uh, trying to uh, destroy it with mines or anything like that and of course it's capable of taking down the enemy tanks oh and we've met one it's a panzer 3 ausrun j now the, so the Soviets actually used 3,782 Valentine II's during the war and of those 2,394 came from Britain and 1,388 came from Canada. You see his shells are going straight through the side of that Panther by Al-Sulong and he's wiped him out. Now we've got a T-28 up ahead but somehow a Sahariano, an Italian tier 3 medium, has managed to get behind us, so we're going to try and destroy him. Now it appears that he's actually focusing on our T-127, which is also a premium, but he's actually looking at the wrong tank, because we're the ones who are actually shredding him, and he's gone. So that's two kills. Now the thickest armour on this tank is actually at the front of the vehicle. 60 millimeters, much, much more than the BT-5 had, and much more than that T-28 up ahead has. In fact, that T-28 doesn't appear to have anything more than the 76 millimeter gun, and he's just not able to get through our armor. That's why he's blocking shots for 110 hit points. This armor is so strong that the enemy had no answer for it. The same was true for the Germans. They didn't have any answer for these powerful guns on tanks that move very, very slowly. So the Germans, um, the Soviets really appreciated the Valentine II. They didn't particularly like the Matilda because it was so complicated, but they liked the Valentine. And he's got another kill, that's three kills. Okay, we just got hit the tracks by the T-28. And we're still bouncing rounds from him. And we're doing the same to him as we did to the other one. Tearing them apart bit by bit. That fast fire rate really making a difference. Oh, cheeky one. The T6 medium just hit us with an HE round using his howitzer gun. And we're now doing the same to him by shredding. Yeah, you can see all those holes we're putting in his armor. They're just going straight through and it won't take long to take him down just want a couple more rounds and he's doing the same he's struggling his guns dropped and he's out the game but he managed to get one round into us but because we were so close it died and we've won the game because all the enemy are dead here's the end of battle results and that was another first ace tanker for 73 north of wtww in the valentine 2 so he got a a first ace tanker in the BT-5, and now he's got a first ace tanker in the set Valentine 2. You can tell it's the first ace because he's got the scrolls underneath the M, and you only get that the first time. He also got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. Shellproof for blocking more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle and surviving the battle. Master Gunner for getting five armor penetrating shots in a row. And you saw how he's literally turning those German tanks into sieves. Well, German tank, Russian tank, and an American tank. And he also got a jeweler's for taking down two tanks who damaged him. Bruiser Medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get 10. He got a cool headed for surviving 10 or more ricochets, non penetrations from the enemy. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And finally, he got a steel wall for blocking the most damage in the game. At least 11 hits over 1,000 hit points. His win eight from that one, 15,450, which compares very nicely with the 22,798 that he got off the first battle. So, 
what a game. Let's have a look at the team score. It was a reduced numbers game. Yes, it started out. There was only 12 on either team. But the amount of damage he managed to do was 2,459. And the only other player who managed to get over 1,000 hit points was the Panzer. Is that Zwei Zwei or Drei? I think that's a Panzer Drei Alsurung J on his own team who managed 1,145. And he also got an Orlix medal in that game. And the third highest, well, that was the T127 who got only 780 hit points of damage. The only player on our team who actually died, and that was the Panzer Sebs Valafeta Ein C, uh, who unfortunately uh, got wiped out by one of uh, the enemy team, the M3 Stuart, who actually got a cool headed. So he must have uh, gone around the rest of our guys and managed to take that guy out. When it came to kills, yes, we got the highest four kills. Three kills went to the Panzer 3 Alson J. Two kills went to the other Valentine 2 on our team. And when it came to base XP, he's got 1,555. And the Panzer 3 managed 1,184. They were the only two players who managed to get over 1,000 base, with the third place going to the T127 and 698. So that's two games in a row where he's got the top in all three columns. Because, yes, he did get the top in all three columns in this game as well. Yes, there you see. So let's go back to the details. Well, we can see he actually fired 62 rounds in this one, only two of which actually missed. So he got 59 direct hits on the enemy, but only 55 penetrations. But those were shells that actually hit, um, I think the front of the T6 got a deflection. And when he fired into the tracks on some of the other vehicles as well, the shell didn't go through. But 2,459 hit points of damage, all of it at close range. 18 hits received from the enemy, only one of which actually penetrated because he had the front of the vehicle to the enemy. And of course, he had 60 millimeters of armor and they just couldn't get through it. It was just too strong for them. In fact, um, the front of the turret, if I remember correctly, on the um, Valentine is actually 65 millimeters or is it 68? Just check my notes. It's 65. Yes, it is just slightly thicker but the tank only weighs 18 and a half tons or so um so it's actually still uh was it 16 and a half maybe 17 tons yeah so it's 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 a very light tank as such but it does have the armor in the right place to protect it anyway he did um he blocked damage of 1430 hit points he spotted three enemy tanks five enemies damaged four killed and he made a loss on this game, mainly down to the fact that he fired nothing but premium of 2,687 credits. And he also took away 5,832 experience points out of it as well uh, after getting a bonus for a premium vehicle and, of course, a big amount in the battle. The battle only lasted 3 minutes 30 seconds. Yes, there was a reduced number of players, but you can see he was literally tearing his way through them. And if the battle had continued much longer, he might have actually picked up a uh, either a Top Gun or um, another medal at least. Uh, but um, yes, he certainly did very, very well. Uh, and as you can see, the Valentine 2 is still a very good tank at Tier 4, a very stable tank at Tier 4. Well, I think the Soviets liked it because it was so robust. And of course, it was very simple to maintain. I hope you enjoyed these two replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.